Hi everyone, it's Tarrant. And Stella here from Meeple University on the Dice Tower. Thanks for joining us. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Avalonia, a game designed by R. Xu and published by Farside Games Entertainment. We are using a prototype copy here of the game and so the rules and components may not be final. Let's get to it. In the plague-ridden, post-apocalyptic world of Avalon, life is hard. Drought abounds, men are impure, and only the purebloods, few and far between, and captured and traded by pureblood traders, remain untainted by the plague. In Avalonia, players fight against each other and the landscape in search of pure blood to keep their factions alive or to pay homage to the beastly King Arthur. Players will gain points as they control the supply of pure blood, and the first player to 30 points, or whoever holds the strongest place when Arthur is reborn, will win the game. To set up, each player chooses a faction represented by a colour and symbol. Take all of your faction's pieces, which include your player board, three hero cards which are shuffled into a face-up pile, the starter cards, HQ token and score token with your symbol, and a pure blood lab board, which is the same for all factions. You'll also take all of your faction's minis, which includes the coloured minis and the grey minis representing your three hero cards, plus your base rings. Take the main board, which corresponds to your player count, and then, based on this illustration in the rulebook, place the player HQs, the human hive tokens, and the pure blood trader minis. Place one pure blood adult token inside the head of each pure blood trader, and put six basic units onto each player's HQ. Finally, set up the Excalibur board. Next to the victory point track, place each player's tribal token on zero points. Shuffle all of the upgrade action cards, which are the ones which do not show a player icon down in the bottom. Place the deck on this space, and then deal out four cards face up. The first one is inverted, placed upside down, and the others are placed from right to left, the right way up. Then at the top of the board, place the minis for Arthur, and his eight artifacts. You're now ready to play. Avalonia is played in rounds, and each round is played in four phases. First is the planning phase, where players will use action cards from their hand to choose the actions they'll be taking this round, as well as their turn order, which is based on this initiative number. Second is the actions phase, and in that turn order, each player will take the three actions that they've selected from top to bottom. Third is the King Arthur phase, and here players will be simultaneously bidding in order to gain points and access to the artifacts of King Arthur. And finally is the cleanup phase, where players will gain victory points for the human hives and pure blood traders they control, and will gain income before setting up for the next round. So now let's have a look at each phase in detail. The first phase is the planning phase, and this is done by all players simultaneously. Each player looks through all action cards in hand, which will be all of them except for the two that were played in the previous round. Each player must choose two action cards and then stack them in the following way, so that you can see one of the white top actions and two of the black bottom actions. Then flip the cards over in that stack. Once all players are done, simultaneously all players will flip over the top of those two cards, which is known as the leading card, and then you'll resolve turn order. Determine your initiative value, which is equal to your leading card's initiative plus your player board's initiative. The turn order will be from lowest initiative to highest. Since each player board has a unique number here, there will never be a tie. Then you'll move to the actions phase, and here each player will take one turn in that established turn order. The first thing you'll do is flip over your other card. This remains hidden until it is your turn to act, and then you'll slip it underneath your first card in the way we described before. Then you'll resolve your three actions from top to bottom. You can choose to skip over an action if you cannot or do not wish to do it anymore, but you cannot do the actions out of order. 
there are five main actions available in the game. Move, Attack, Harvest, Spawn, and Research. Each action has a number associated with it, and this is the number of action points that you have when taking that action. To attack, choose a zone in which both you and at least one other player have units. Here, yellow could attack in one of these two zones, but not this one. Then choose a number of units up to the attack value to attack with. So here you could choose two of these four units. Each player has three default types of unit a basic unit, an armoured unit, and an advanced unit. When a unit attacks, it generates hits based on what's shown here. So a basic unit applies half a hit, an armoured unit applies one, and an advanced unit applies two. So if yellow did an attack three on blue with these units, three hits would be generated. Each armour unit that a defender has in the battle will block one hit. So in this instance, there would be two hits remaining. For each of these hits, the defender chooses one unit to lose from that battle. A leftover half hit has no effect. With the game's standard units, the defender does not do any damage to the attacker during an attack. But note there are some hero units in the game who apply some special abilities in combat. If there are multiple enemy players in the same zone, you can choose to split your attack action between those enemies. But remember that you are choosing an enemy player, not an enemy unit. It is the defender that chooses which units are destroyed in the battle. The second action is to move. Each movement point allows you to move one unit, one space to an adjacent zone. You cannot move the same unit more than once with the same movement action. So here, four separate units would need to be moved. But you can move the same unit multiple times on the same turn if you've played multiple movement actions. After you've taken a move action, you can take a free attack action in one of the destination zones. Say for example, yellow takes a move three and moves one, two, three. Yellow could now take an attack 2 in this zone, because two units moved in there, or an attack 1 in this zone. Furthermore, the attacking units do not need to be the units that moved, so the attack 2 in here could be done with these two stronger units. Enough to wipe out both defending units. The third action is Harvest. This is the main way to gain the game's most vital resource, Pure Blood Infant. Since in this post-apocalyptic wasteland, you'll be using and trading in the blood of pure blood infants to further your own race. The harvest action is done in two steps. Firstly, you can trade for pure blood adults with one of the pure blood traders. Choose a zone containing a pure blood trader which you control, meaning you have the most units there. Yellow here controls these two zones, but not this one. Then, from one of those zones, take all of the pure blood adult out of the trader's head. You'll return the pure blood adult tokens to the supply, and replace them with cubes, which you'll add to your pure blood lab track. You'll now harvest these adults for infants on an ongoing basis, as this represents an income of pure blood infant each round. The second half of the harvest action is to take pure blood infant equal to the number on the action. You can always do this as part of the harvest action, whether you successfully trade with a trader or not. The fourth action is spawn, and you'll use this to spend pure blood infant to add new minis onto the board. The number is the maximum number of units that you can spawn during this action, while the cost of each unit in pure blood infant is shown here. You can spawn any standard unit type, as long as you have a mini available, or you can spawn the top hero from your hero deck. After paying the cost, you must choose which zone to place your new unit into. You can always place a new unit into your HQ. To place away from HQ, you must have at least two basic units for each unit you spawn there. So here, this one unit could be spawned either here or here. If bringing in two units, they could both be spawned here because there are four basic units. 
or you could split them, one here and one here, or spawn one or both of them at HQ. You could not spawn here because there is only one basic unit present. If you spawn your top hero, then you'll take the hero's mini and put it into one of your base rings before placing it. Then move that hero off the top of your deck and near your board, representing your active heroes. There'll now be a new hero on top of the deck. If a hero is ever defeated in battle, then its card goes back onto the bottom of your hero's deck, ready to come out again later in the game if you spawn it. Each hero also has an instant effect, and if you wish to use it, you must pay its pure blood infant cost and then take it at the exact point of spawning the hero. Otherwise, this effect is lost. The final action is research, and it always comes in the form of research one. This allows you to take one of the three face-up non-inverted cards from the Excalibur board. This more powerful card is added straight into your hand and will make you more powerful for the rest of the game. Then slide any cards over to the right to fill gaps and refill off the top of the draw deck. As you can see, some of these cards show more than one action or the same action more than once, and you'll treat these as separate actions when you come to resolve them from top to bottom on your turn. Those are the five basic actions in the game, and do note as well that each of the factions also has a special starting card with its own action, and you can read about those on the faction sheets. Once all players are done with actions, it's now time for the King Arthur phase, and here players will be paying tribute to King Arthur in order to try to gain access to the powerful artifact units, as well as earn some points. The King Arthur phase is a single bid blind auction in Pure Blood Infant. If, when the bids are revealed, there is no single leading player, then the phase ends. But if there is a single winning bid, then that player pays the bid, gains one victory point, places a Pure Blood Infant Mini onto one of the eight spaces around King Arthur's throne, and then takes one of the Artifact Minis and puts it into one of their base rings in HQ. The battle statistics for the artifacts are shown here at the bottom of Arthur's throne and will be worth some extra victory points at the end of the round, which we'll cover shortly. It's now time for the cleanup phase. Each player gains an income of pure blood infant from their lab equal to the lowest number that does not have a cube next to it. So here it would be five. Cards in the past slot of the player board are picked up and returned to hand and Cards in the current slot are moved across to the past. Next, each player earns victory points for the pure blood traders and human hives that they control. And again, this means having more units than any other player. Controlling a zone with a human hive is worth one point. Controlling a zone with one or more pure blood traders is worth two points. This two points is increased to three if you have an artifact as part of your controlling party. Controlling a zone containing both a human hive and a pure blood trader is worth three points. And again, this could be increased to four with an artifact. However, artifacts don't increase the score on zones with hives alone. As it's laid out here, yellow would gain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven victory points. Next, you'll move the pure blood traders around the board, according to the movement showing here on the inverted upgrade card. Here, it's two steps along single arrows. This is the sole purpose for these arrows, which are printed on the spaces around the board. If a card showing a double arrow is drawn, then you'll move along the double arrows where they exist, or simply along the single arrows if there's no double arrow in that zone. Discard the rightmost upgrade card to become the next round's movement card. And place one new Pure Blood Adult into each Pure Blood Trader's head, up to a maximum of three. Avalonia can end in two ways. The first is when a player reaches 30 or more points. When this happens, finish the current simultaneous scoring phase, and the player with the highest score wins. In the event of a tie, check the main board. 
among the tied players, whoever controls the most total zones breaks the tie. If still tied, whoever controls the most zones with pure blood traders. And if still tied, whoever has the most pure blood infant remaining in their supply. The game will also end if the 8th pure blood infant is placed around the King Arthur mini. Arthur is awakened and the game ends immediately before even claiming the artifact or the victory point for winning the bid. Count up which player currently controls the most of Arthur's artifacts. That player is eliminated from the game. If tied, then whichever player controls the most human hives is eliminated, and if still tied, whoever controls the most pureblood traders. Among the non-eliminated players, whoever has the most victory points wins, with the same tiebreakers that we described before for the 30 point victory. And that's how to play Avalonia! Check out the project page for Avalonia, we'll put a link to that in the description below so you can check it out. And we also have a playthrough video on the Dice Tower, so do check that out if you want to see the game in action. If you find this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave them in the comment section below. See you next time!